comes to us from the Gospel of Luke. I'll be reading Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 28. Hear now the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now on one occasion, an expert of the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to gain eternal life? It's quite a question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what is written in the law? How do you read it? The expert answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. This is the word of Almighty God for the people of Almighty God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, our Father, we pray today that You will open our hearts and our minds to You and that as we listen to the words of the expert on the law, as he challenged the great expert on life, that You will help us to see clearly the answer to eternal life. Heavenly Father, we come into Your presence today to worship You. And as we listen to Your Word, we pray that You will speak to us today. That You'll open our hearts and our minds and our strength and our souls. That we may not only see what love looks like, but that we might be able to learn from that love. And take that love. And share that love. Come upon us now, Holy Spirit, and open us up. With the love of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Came across a story this week about a little girl who was staying over at her friend's house and having dinner with their family. Well, before dinner, her friend's mom asked her, since the vegetable that was going to be served at dinner that night was going to be buttered broccoli, her friend's mom asked and said, do you like broccoli? To which the little girl very politely replied, Oh, yes, ma'am. I love it. Well, as they were sitting down around the dinner table, the meal was uh, going on, and the plate of buttered broccoli was passed to the little girl. But she just took that plate and passed it on to the next person. She didn't take any. Well, her friend's mom was a little curious, and she said, "Wait, wait, wait a minute! I, I thought you said you, I thought you said you love broccoli." And the little girl said sweetly, "Oh yes, ma'am, I do, but not enough to eat it." And I thought about this little girl's dilemma, and I wondered, how do other people know what we really love? How do people know what you love? Well, one, people, one way people know what we love is by listening to our conversations. We usually talk about the things that we love. Listen to what people talk about sometime and you'll see exactly what I mean. People will talk about their kids. They'll talk about their grandkids. They'll talk about their cars, places that they've gone on vacation, things that they found on Pinterest. They'll talk about the stuff that they just bought at the store. People talk about the things they love. That's what all those things have in common. People will share what they love with others who will take an interest in it. And that draws us back to look at our Scripture reading again this morning. For as Jesus points out to the expert of the law, in order for us to have eternal Life, the life that Jesus really talks about here. We have to love God and our neighbor. 
And that begs us to ask the question then, if we're supposed to love God, do we talk about Him? Do we let others listen in on our conversations about Jesus? Do we talk about what God is doing in our lives and doing in the lives of our loved ones? Do we talk about God at all? And when we do talk about our neighbors, do we talk about them with love? Could others, simply by listening to our conversations or overhearing our phone, call, phone calls, tell that we love Jesus? Could they tell that we love our neighbor? Well, let's start with the conversation uh, about God. Let's take a look at what we're supposed to do in loving God. Now, if we don't talk about God, what are the things do we do to show others that we do love God? A few weeks ago, I joked around about the guy with the cross hanging from his rearview mirror, the bumper sticker that said, Jesus is coming soon, a little outline of the fish on his car, and how his behavior betrayed the fact that he said he was a Christian. Well, you know, there's a lot of truth in the humor of that story. How many times do we catch ourselves wearing the Christian t-shirt, but then continuing to use language that talk or talk about things that would make Jesus cringe? How many times do we wear the jewelry with the cross dangling from it, either the necklace or the bracelet, and then treat other people like lepers or worse, like our enemies? Do we love God? Do we really love God? Do we love Him enough to talk about Him? Do we love Him enough to show the world that we love Him? After His resurrection, Jesus asked Peter one very important question. He said, do you love me? This was so important, He asked Peter three times, do you love me? I have to wonder, how important is that question to us today? Think about it. If your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend or your mom or your dad or maybe your children had to ask the question, do you love me? What does that say about our relationship with them? i got to tell you, if someone had to ask me that question, do you love me? That would really get to me. Because it would make me think about the relationship that I really do have with them. It would make me think as to whether or not I was doing everything I could to show them, to let them know how much I love them. And maybe I need to be a little more specific here because showing our love for someone is not about what we do. It's more about how we act. It's about how we act. I can buy my wife flowers and candy every day. But if that's all I do, am I really showing her that I love her? In the same way, I can read my Bible every day. I can come to church every time the doors are open. But if that's all I do, am I showing God I really love Him? If we're honest with ourselves and with God for just a moment, can we be honest with God for just a moment? Is the relationship that we have with God one that shows Him our love? Really. Charles Spurgeon, the 19th century evangelist, talked about Christ's love and our love for God and asked a simple question. Why should we love Him? 
Why should we love God? Well, the Apostle John, in one of his letters to the early church, said it very simply. He said, we love God because He loved us first. But just because someone loves us doesn't guarantee that we're going to love them in return. See, in order to love someone, there has to be a deliberate action on the part of the one being loved. That person has to show that they recognize that love, that they understand that love, and that they reciprocate that love. And whenever it comes to loving God, we've got to recognize God's love for us, work on ways to understand that love for us, and then give that love back to God. Paul told the Roman church that our love must be sincere. Our love must be sincere. We do that by recognizing, by understanding, and by reciprocating God's love. We do that by paying attention to what God told us to do, and more importantly, what God told us to be. His children. His disciples. If Jesus were standing before you today, what would you be willing to do to show Him how much you love Him? Well, if we believe as we come and worship, as we started our worship service today, that God is present with us, that our Lord Jesus is here today, and that we've entered into the presence of the eternal worship, then the realization has to set in that because of our faith in Jesus, He's here. Amen? He's here. And because He is with us, then the question no longer becomes a rhetorical question. It becomes a real question. What are you willing to do today? Right now, right here, to let Jesus know how much you love Him. Think about it. Jesus said, they will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Meaning people will know you love Jesus if we love each other. Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with every fiber of your being and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the whole conversation between him and this expert. This expert in the law. But we have to remember that the expert asked the question, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? In other words, the conversation and the desire is that life is not about this life, it's about eternal life. And I love what Jesus says here. Because in response to the expert of the law, he says, so you tell me, how do you interpret it? What do you think, Jesus says? And the expert says two things. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And... Love your neighbor as yourself. That's how I interpret it, he says to Jesus. Jesus says, you've answered correctly. That's it. Notice, though, too, that in his response, you cannot separate the two. He says, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor. So if you love God, you will love your neighbor. And we must love our neighbor. Sincerely. Romans chapter 12 reminds us that love must be sincere, as Paul said, but it also says that we're to be devoted to one another in brotherly love. That means that we move from being just convinced that we need to love God and our neighbor to being convicted that we need to love God and our neighbor. What's the difference? I can be convinced that I need to lose weight, but I can do nothing about it. 
But when I am convicted that I need to lose weight, I will do everything in my power to accomplish it. We need to be convinced and convicted that Jesus needs to know we love Him and that our neighbor needs to know that we love them too. 20th century playwright George Bernard Shaw once said, the worst sin towards our fellow creatures is not to hate them. No, the worst sin is to be indifferent to them. I take that statement one step further and say the worst sin that we can commit against Christ is to show indifference towards Him. We need to overcome any indifference we might have, whether to Christ or to one another, and we need to love. Because that's the key, Jesus says. That's the key to inheriting eternal life. Love God. Love neighbor. There's a problem though. Because love is difficult. Love is difficult because it means it means you have to risk breaking your heart. But I got a promise for you. God is never going to break your heart. God is never going to break your heart. And taking a risk on others is what Jesus is calling us to do. To have a heart that is breaking because our love for God and our love for others is such that what is happening in our world today is killing our society and killing the lost. That really should break our hearts. If we are to be the church of Jesus Christ, and trust me, we are to be the church of Jesus Christ, then we need to love the Lord with our whole hearts, with our whole souls, with our whole strength, with our whole mind. And we need to love our neighbors. Just like we love ourselves. To do anything less is not being the church we claim to be. PG-13 section of our sermon today. Tony Campolo in his book, The Kingdom of God is a Party, told of the trip that he took to Honolulu. While he was on this trip for his speaking engagement, jet lag was setting in and he found himself unable to sleep one night. So he made his way unwittingly to a diner in a rather seedy part of town at about 3.30 in the morning to grab a bite to eat. A few minutes after Tony walked into the restaurant, he was surrounded by eight or nine ladies of the evening who had just gotten off work and come in to grab a quick bite. He overheard one of them talking to a friend who said, tomorrow's my birthday. Her friend rebutted, <laughs> So what do you want from me? You want me to get you a cake and sing happy birthday? The birthday girl protested. She said, why do you have to be so mean? I was just telling you. That's all. Why do you have to put me down? Why should you give me a birthday party now when I've never had a birthday party in my life? After the women left, Tony said his heart was touched. In fact, his heart was broken for this one woman. And so he decided he was going to throw her a surprise birthday party. He talked it over with the owner. And the owner said, sure, I'll let you decorate the entire diner. But the cake, the cake, that's mine. The next day, the stunned girl was deeply touched when the whole diner sang happy birthday to her. And when she got to blow the cake, to blow the candles out on her birthday cake. Tony said that at that point he went up and he asked her if he could pray for her. And he put his arm around her and he prayed a beautiful prayer for her, for her salvation, for her needs, for her life. And after that prayer, the owner grabbed him and pulled him aside and said, Hey, you never told me you were a preacher. What kind of church do you belong to? 
And Tony replied, I belong to a church that throws birthday parties for prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. The diner owner sneered and said, No, you don't. There's no church like that in the world. If there was, I'd join it. Friends, can we be that kind of church? Can we be the kind of church that looks at one another and that looks at our neighbor with the love of God in our eyes? Can we be the kind of, of church that people would say, I would join a church like that? When we come to church, our, when we come to worship God, our goal is not to just feel good about ourselves and go home. To come in and punch our ticket so we can say, yeah, check church off in the list of things to do today. That's not why we're here. Our goal in worshiping God is to love Him with every fiber of our being so that we can go out into the world to love our neighbor every day. Can we be that kind of church? Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we, as we think about Your Word to us, It does remind us that we need to love You, Lord. Father, forgive us for the times when we haven't done that. Forgive us for the times when we've made it about us. Forgive us for the times whenever we've bickered with one another and we've fought over the little things in life. when it's caused problems for others. Lord Jesus, Your love for us is so great. It's so great that this morning we, we do recognize it. We do not understand it at all. But we do receive it. And we want to turn it right back around and give it back to You. And so we pray, give us Your Holy Spirit this morning. Come upon us and fill us with Your love. That we might be able to take that love out into the world and share it with others. That we truly might be able to see them with Your eyes and love them with Your arms. Arms that You've given us to put around them in their time of need. And so we pray. Bless us, Lord Jesus, today as we praise Your name and give You all of our love. Lord Jesus, bless us now. Amen. Projectors back down again. We were going to sing a song. Can you find Oh How I Love Jesus real quick? Let's stand together as we sing, Oh, how I love Jesus.